everyone, and welcome to our special Just for Kids presentation tonight. I'm Amy Lynn. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to be talking about childhood asthma. It is the most common serious chronic disease in infants and children, yet it's often difficult to diagnose. And managing a child's asthma is crucial to helping them live a normal and healthy life. Over the next 30 minutes, you have an opportunity to call in your questions and have them answered by our experts who are live in our studio tonight. We want to begin by introducing you to those experts. We have Dr. Guy Tree J. Shanker with ETSU Pediatrics and Dr. John Schweitzer with Nicewanger Children's Hospital. And thank you both so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Well, we're going to be talking about childhood asthma, but first of all, we want to kind of get to know you a little bit. So go ahead and just maybe give us a, a brief introduction. Yes, and thank you. And uh, like you said, I'm Dr. Schweitzer. I'm a pediatric hospitalist here in town. So I, I, I'm a pediatrician that takes care of children in the hospital and help take care of a lot of kids with asthma. And I myself have asthma and uh, been taking uh, care of a lot of kids with asthma for a long time. So you know firsthand about asthma and yes, what we're talking yeah. about tonight. And you do as well because your son has asthma. That's right. It does run in our family, um, and I work more on the outpatient setting. So I am a general pediatrician. I am um, the, also the medical director of the ETSU clinic, and so oversee a lot of the processes that we set in place for children with asthma, um, and have worked with children all my life and have experience there. Well, before we get started, let's make sure that everybody understands we do have folks standing by to take your phone calls, to take your questions. Here is that 1-800 number. If you would like to call in a question, go ahead and call that number. Somebody will take down your question and we will ask it to our doctors tonight. And let's begin by talking a little bit about asthma in general, a little background for folks, maybe a, a definition and some of the symptoms when it comes to asthma. Uh, yeah, and absolutely. And, uh, you know, asthma is... A chronic disease, it's a disease of the lungs and the immune system both, in, in which uh, often starts in childhood and can sort of get worse into later childhood and can affect breathing and can really cause a, a lot of symptoms and problems. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, things you can do to help. And we were talking about asthma and you were telling me just about some of the numbers and some of the different statistics when it comes to asthma as well and what we're seeing here in our community. Yeah, um, asthma affects like 8 to 10 percent of children in the U.S. Um, and really when you think of what asthma does and how much it affects their ability to live a normal life, to be able to go to school, it was shocking to me to see that really between 10 and 13 million school days are missed every year from asthma. Wow. And that's a big number when you think of it that way. Um, if you think about the amount of money that is lost per year, uh, $726 million per year is lost by families who miss work in order to take care of their children for asthma. Um, so that's a big impact um, that asthma has on all, all of our lives, the children's lives and the families that take care of them. What are some of the symptoms when it comes to childhood asthma? What are some of the things that maybe a parent should say, you know what, maybe we really should get this checked out? So wheezing is something that everybody remembers and recognizes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes wheezing um, may be in the lungs, but may also be audibly heard. Um, coughing, especially coughing at night, is something to watch for. Um, difficulty breathing, so if you really see the child pulling in and out and having trouble breathing, then that's something to be thinking about. Oftentimes, asthma is a chronic disease, so it's not just they wheezed one time or they had trouble wheezing with one infection. If you have trouble recurrently, so, you know, this time I wheeze, I'm fine, maybe that was just a virus and a passing cold or bronchitis. But if every time that there's a change in the weather or I have a viral illness or something else comes up and I have trouble with coughing and congestion and wheezing, then maybe the child has asthma. And the first thing to do would really, if you think your child has asthma, talk to your provider about it. Ask them about it, have them assess it some more to see if this is something that you should worry about. So it sounds like there's multiple things. One in itself may just be one particular symptom, but if you seem to have a few of these, maybe it's time to get some answers. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a clue if, if things keep happening, that that is a clue that, you know, it may not be just bronchitis. It may not just be an infection. It could be that, that you know, your child has asthma. And talking to you as a mom real quick, when did you kind of know that 
this might be something. Did you start to see those symptoms in your son? Yes. Um, again, like I said, some viral illnesses in winter can set off wheezing. He, as a baby, did have RSV, that virus that a lot of us hear about, and oftentimes RSV is followed by some recurrent wheezing. So we did see that. However, as time went on, and every time that there was some other illness, just a little bit of a cold, we found that he was wheezing or coughing. We realized that, no, this is more than just a simple virus. And it's, when it comes to asthma, too, it's so important to be able to diagnose this because you guys were telling me the care plan is mm -hmm. critical. Once we know what we're dealing with, then it becomes sort of putting the pieces together. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the options for taking care of a child or even an adult with asthma, there are so many options these days. And there are so many possibilities uh, in terms of helping you control your asthma and control your symptoms that it can be almost a little overwhelming. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what we as doctors and healthcare providers are here for it. You know, uh, we can find something that will work really well for your child and that we can tailor, tailor make that, that recipe for you and for your child for something that will work. And, uh, you know, I, I tend to be kind of a visual learner and like to see things written down. And that's what that sort of asthma action plan or asthma care plan is a written down concrete thing that you can look at that says, you know, every day I should be doing this and trying to avoid that. And, uh, you know, if I'm feeling a little bit bad, uh, here's what I should do that day. Or if I'm feeling really bad, I should go see my doctor or go to the emergency department and, and get help. And it sounds like something that the family really has to attack on one level altogether when someone in your family has asthma. That's correct. Um, as Dr. Scheiss was mentioning, you can make an asthma action plan with your provider, which really has the child's name has their emergency contact, has the doctor's name on there, so whom to contact in case of other added questions, has a green, a yellow, and a red zone that really talks about if you're in your normal state with your asthma, what are your regular medications, what are your controller medications may be if you have a more severe form of asthma. And then it talks about what signs and symptoms to watch for if your asthma were to get a little bit worse and what preventative actions you can take to help kind of stop it at that point and not make it a whole lot worse. And then what really significant symptoms, um, you know, real um, difficulty breathing or difficulty with catching air or lacking in oxygen, what those symptoms would look like and would necessitate your going to the ER or you know calling 911 and those kinds of things. And what we encourage people to do is really to take this asthma action plan from their doctor but then also share it with their school because mm -hmm. if you think about it, half the time the child is at school and you know you can have an asthma um, exacerbation anywhere and so we really like to kind of make this plan as a whole for the family for the school f looking at the whole child's environment wow and I can imagine that piece of information crucial to the schools and the teachers that are working with that student to kind of see those warning signs before mm -hmm. it might be too late and they get into a, a more severe case Exactly. Right. And like with everything, kind of the earlier you catch a problem, the, the smaller a problem it is to fix. And that really is the goal here, isn't it, when it comes to asthma, is creating that plan that works for the specific child to keep them on the field and in the school and, and out of the hospital. That's right. You can think of asthma in a couple of ways. Um, there are times when you may have an acute exacerbation, meaning you have significant coughing, wheezing, triggered by maybe a viral illness or triggered by something that happened that caused you to cough and wheeze. And as physicians, we like to make sure that we are taking care of that acute phase and mitigating the symptoms and then having them come back and follow up within two to six weeks to make sure that things are better. But then the other way to look at asthma is to see how can we prevent future episodes of wheezing? Mm. And so when, that, when we think about sort of the maintenance phase of asthma, there are several medications that can help um, to control your symptoms of asthma and actually prevent you from having future episodes of wheezing. And so that is the goal, is to get your asthma under such good control that you really don't have more trouble with wheezing with it. Um, and so, for those things, you really want to see your doctor 
three times a year, four times a year. So every three to four months to go back and see your physician to make sure that you're under good maintenance control would be sort of the goal there. Okay, certainly just getting this conversation started, we still want to talk about different treatment options. You mentioned some of those triggers. We're going to get into those questions coming up, but first we are going to take a quick break. We'll be back with our Just for Kids presentation coming up in just a few minutes. Asthma is a chronic disease that affects the airways in our lungs. Asthma attacks may be sudden or take time, even days to develop. Attacks can be mild, moderate, or severe. During an asthma attack, airways become inflamed, making it hard to breathe. Symptoms of an asthma attack include coughing, shortness of breath and trouble breathing, wheezing, and tightness or pain in the chest. Ask your doctor today about your child's asthma. Your doctor can help you develop an action plan that will help you learn to prevent your child's asthma attacks. You can help avoid a trip to the emergency room by managing your child's asthma action plan daily. An action plan helps you take care of your child and reduce the triggers in your home. Your asthma action plan will include triggers, instructions for asthma medicines, what to do during an asthma attack, when to call the doctor, and emergency phone numbers. An action plan can travel with your child, have copies at home, school, and with babysitters. Having a good asthma action plan is a great way to keep your child from having asthma attacks. An asthma attack can be a very scary experience. Kids with asthma should never be exposed to cigarette smoke. Pledge to make your home and car smoke free. Smoke from wood burning stoves and fireplaces contain a mixture of gases and small particles. If possible, choose another way to heat your home. You can also use a HEPA filter in the same room as your stove or fireplace. Consider keeping all pets outside. But if you do have a pet inside, make sure to keep them out of the bedroom and off the furniture. You can help manage your child's asthma by keeping the air they breathe clean. Well, again, welcome back, and thanks so much for tuning in to our special program this evening. We are talking about childhood asthma, and tonight we have two doctors here with us. We have Dr. Gaitree J. Shanker with ETSU Pediatrics and Dr. John Schweitzer with Nice Longer Children's Hospital, and we want to thank them for taking some time out of their Thursday evening to be with us here live in our studios. Thank you both so much for joining us tonight. Thank you already getting a lot of questions. We talked about just how apparent this is here in our region and certainly seeing that with the volume of phone calls that we are getting tonight. So we want to get right to the questions. And one person asked from Mountain City, do you ever outgrow asthma as an adult or do you have it as a child and then continue on with it? And you were talking about this a little earlier. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great question, a very common question that people have about asthma. And, you know, I think the there's a lot of old information about it, but I think you know these days we really say you don't ever really outgrow asthma for many people. Pr probably eight or nine and ten children who have asthma, it will get better as they sort of approach a, you know late adolescence and adulthood. But once you have asthma, you never really outgrow, outgrow it. It's always hiding in the background there and can resurface later in your life. And you said it kind of gets better as you get older. Is it because you've learned to manage it and and kind of really? hone in on those triggers? Uh, well, probably at least part of it uh, is that, that, that learning how to, how to manage your own asthma, but then part of it is also for whatever reason, it's not fully understood. Uh, it, it does get better. Your immune system gets uh, a little more relaxed about your triggers and stuff as you get older in the majority of people with asthma, but unfortunately not for everybody. And even, uh, you know, even if you have gotten to the point where you don't have to take a medicine every day or, or you don't have to, you know, avoid things as assiduously as you once did, it is still hiding back there in the background. And, and if you get a big enough trigger, it can come back. So I always want to be aware as you're growing. Yes, I think part of as you get into adolescence, it does become a little bit better. However, that's also a time when we find lots of children ignore their medications and don't mm -hmm. take them like they're supposed to. So I think it is a balance, knowing that it never does completely go away, but learning how to manage it properly is, I think, important. And we started to talk a little bit about some of the triggers when it comes to asthma. One of our questions tonight, can perfume or cologne trigger an asthma attack? Certainly, I think for some people, if that is a trigger of their asthma, it can do it. Uh, some of the common allergens when you think about triggers for asthma are really um, things like dust or dust mites, um, cockroaches, and um, pet dander, and so um, cat or dog fur, um, cigarette smoke, and then of course certain strong smells or perfumes can trigger people's asthma. Um, as 
the child grows, oftentimes the family is the best judge of what seems to make their asthma worse or what seems to get it better. Mm. Um, in, you might really notice that, oh my gosh, every time I go to this one particular place and we are, you know, we encounter this perfume, the child comes back and they're wheezing and that may definitely be the case. So really, once you get that action plan and you determine those triggers, it's kind of going through your house and trying to eliminate it as best as you can. Yeah, absolutely. The, the first step in a, a, you know, avoiding asthma attacks and, and problems from asthma is avoiding the things that cause you to have them in the first place. That's one of the, the first steps that we recommend is, you know, if you know that, you know, you're allergic to grass, for example, then, then you probably need to be very careful, uh, you know, when you're being outside and, and playing playing sports and we have to prepare you for grass exposure. Uh, you know, if you're allergic to cats, uh, you know, m maybe uh, try to minimize your uh, exposure to cats and, and things like that. And that brought me to another question, which is, can kids with asthma play sports? Which I know firsthand that they, they certainly can. That is true. In fact, we truly encourage kids with asthma to play sports. And that may seem a little backward and you say, there are some children that have lots of trouble with wheezing when they exercise. Why would you encourage them to play sports? The reasoning behind that is that that sport really helps open up their lungs. It really helps expand their lung and increase their lung function, which in the long run is very helpful for their asthma. Now, acutely, definitely, either the exercise itself or the running for a certain period of time can cause their asthma to trigger and may cause them to wheeze. But for that, we do have good medications. And in fact, we encourage children to take their short-acting medication 20 minutes before exercise so that they can prevent that acute wheeze and they can prevent that cough that comes on with the running. But in the long run, yes, go for it. Sports, swimming, you know, the more you can expand your lungs, the better for them. Great, great answer. And then one of the questions was, when do I need to bring my kid to the ER if she or she is having an asthma attack? Which I think is such a great question because, you know, I'm sure that you almost kind of get used to them that to the point where, okay, is this one where we really probably should go in? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and you know, it's a, every, every one is different, and every child is different. Uh, th there are a few general guidelines, but, uh, you know, most parents know their, their kids even better than, you know, obviously better than even us doctors mm -hmm. will ever know their kids. And, uh, you know, one of the things I always tell parents is listen to your gut. If it seems like something is wrong, uh, get it checked out. And if, it, if it's really making you scared, get it checked out as quickly as, as you need to. Uh, there are s some there are some things that you can look at and say yes pr almost certainly this is going to be a problem uh, you know kids who have asthma and have had ex had experience with asthma attacks in the past can often tell you how bad they're feeling and they can say you know mom or dad my, my chest really hurts uh, I think something is really wrong here uh, you know if kids are, are breathing very fast or, or breathing very hard or they seem very sleepy and very tired and very lethargic. Uh, all of those would be reasons I would say, please get checked out right away. Any, anything like that, uh, please uh, either call 911 or go to the emergency department for any of those things. I like that you said you use your gut, because I think as a parent, yeah, we, we kind of know if something is, you're just not comfortable anymore. Right. And I think for very small children who can't really express and tell you, I'm really feeling bad, mm -hmm. kind of watching for their normal signs. And so for a baby, their biggest job is to eat. If they're not eating well, that may indeed be a sign that they're wheezing so hard that they can't eat. And, um, you know, watching for kind of that chest movement. And if they're really breathing hard and you can see their chest and their belly move, that may be a sign that they're really wheezing hard. And so just sort of watching for normalcy. And if it seems way out of normal for the child, I think that's a sign that you want to go have that checked out. Okay, great information. How young are kids when they get asthma is, is one of the questions that came in tonight. So you heard me just say for a really young child. Yeah. So really it can start very early. Children under a year of age can definitely have asthma. I think the confusion comes in because like I mentioned earlier, there are some viral illnesses that can cause you to wheeze. And that may be a one and done wheezing where you don't have recurrent trouble with it. So oftentimes I will tell families the first time I see the child wheezing that this may be asthma, it may not. 
if there is a strong family history of asthma, then it may be more likely that that is a sign of asthma for the child. However, the first time they wheeze, that's not something that we can call asthma. Um, and again, in a child that young, there aren't any great tests to say, this test is positive, your child has asthma. Oftentimes, it's sort of the tincture of time, if you will. Mm -hmm. If they have recurrent episodes of wheezing every time they get sick, that may suggest that they have asthma. And so, I think asthma can start very young, but you may not be able to label it asthma until they've had some recurrent problems with it if that kind of makes sense. Definitely does. Some great information. We're going to take a quick break. Again, we'll give you folks at home that number. If you have a question and you would like it to be asked to one of these physicians tonight, we would be happy to do that for you. Go ahead and call that number. We still have a few minutes left. We'll be right back. Asthma is a chronic disease that affects the airways in our lungs. Asthma attacks may be sudden or take time, even days to develop. Attacks can be mild, moderate, or severe. During an asthma attack, airways become inflamed, making it hard to breathe. Symptoms of an asthma attack include coughing, shortness of breath and trouble breathing, wheezing, and tightness or pain in the chest. Ask your doctor today about your child's asthma. Your doctor can help you develop an action plan that will help you learn to prevent your child's asthma attacks. You can help avoid a trip to the emergency room by managing your child's asthma action plan daily. An action plan helps you take care of your child and reduce the triggers in your home. Your asthma action plan will include triggers, instructions for asthma medicines, what to do during an asthma attack, when to call the doctor, and emergency phone numbers. An action plan can travel with your child, have copies at home, school, and with babysitters. Having a good asthma action plan is a great way to keep your child from having asthma attacks. An asthma attack can be a very scary experience. Kids with asthma should never be exposed to cigarette smoke. Pledge to make your home and car smoke free. Smoke from wood burning stoves and fireplaces contain a mixture of gases and small particles. If possible, choose another way to heat your home. You can also use a HEPA filter in the same room as your stove or fireplace. Consider keeping all pets outside. But if you do have a pet inside, make sure to keep them out of the bedroom and off the furniture. You can help manage your child's asthma by keeping the air they breathe clean. Welcome back to our special program tonight. We have been learning all about childhood asthma and more importantly, managing that asthma. And we have just a few minutes left, so we want to get right to your questions. Hearing from a lot of viewers tonight, obviously a very important topic. And one of the questions we had came in about treatment. This is an eight-year-old girl who has asthma. She was diagnosed about three years ago. In the summertime, they say she's okay, and they've got her on a special medicine, and they're wondering if they should still use that year-round or if they should only be using that during the summer when they're obviously seeing more of an increase in these attacks. And you had mentioned the medication was Pomocort. Mm -hmm. um, so Pomocort is what we call an inhaled corticosteroid. And the way I think about inhaled corticosteroids, we call them the asthma vitamin. So really they are what you want to take all the time, every day, whether you're well, whether you're sick, to try and prevent future episodes of wheezing. Um, so there are two or three different kinds of medications with asthma. The albuterol that you hear about is really your short-acting medicine that you take with acute episodes. So it helps you acutely. You use it when you need it. If you don't need it, you don't need to use it. And oftentimes the wheezing gets better just with that. That's used in what we call mild asthma. However, if your symptoms continue to a stage where you have moderate or more severe asthma, then you would definitely want to use your corticosteroid. Now, I know when I say steroids to families, a lot of them will say, oh, I don't want to do something like that all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. And just to make the distinction that it is, this is very different from the steroids you hear about. This is not anabolic steroids. This is not associated with those kinds of side effects. And in fact, this is inhaled, so it goes into your lungs, and it's really not absorbed into your system in any significant amounts. So it's a very safe way of using it to go down into your lungs to calm the inflammation down um, to, help some, to help keep the symptoms at bay. So, and there's different levels when it comes to asthma, obviously, hearing from 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, just like we're all, all of our personalities are different. Everyone who has asthma, their asthma is a little bit different. Everyone's asthma behaves a little bit differently. And you know, some people have sort of mild, and only sometimes have some problems. And some people have sort of more mild symptoms, but have problems more often. And then some people have sort of uh, worse than that or moderate. And some people really have very severe or bad asthma. Um, and you know, everyone, everyone's body is just different w with things like this. One of the other things that, that's also to answer the question, uh, you know, there are some people who don't have to be on the prevention medicine all year long. As you get older, as you get into later childhood, there are ways to tell if you, if you, how bad your asthma is. Uh, there, there are tests that we can do and uh, how, how much medicine you need. Th there are ways to get answers to that question w with some tests. Uh, and I just encourage uh, you know, anybody who has questions like that, especially in an older child, sort of five and older, have a conversation with your healthcare provider about it and they, they can find some more information for you. And you mentioned earlier that action plan, that management plan that they can really see that's color coded that really helps them navigate this. And I would imagine you said everybody's different. Sounds like that plan can change over time too. That plan definitely changes over time. That's a great point. Asthma varies with time and asthma varies dependent upon the amount of control that you have it under. And so that plan can definitely change and morph with time. And the goal may be to get it better to the extent where you may be able to withdraw some of your medications. However, if you find you're getting triggered again or you have an ep episode, you may want to stay on the right amount of medicine that helps control your symptoms. Okay, and we are just about out of time. We want to let everybody know if we did not get to your question, somebody will email you a response. Do we have some different um, parting sort of thoughts for everybody as they're coming away from the show, things that we hope they take with them. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the one thing that I just really want to tell everybody is that, you know, you can, you can be a normal kid. You can do all of the normal kid stuff. You can play sports. You can have fun. You can run around outside. Uh, and, and just be a normal kid and a normal adult and have asthma. And uh, I've lived that myself. And, uh, you know, we just have to, ha have to choose the right medicines for you. And I would second that and say, talk to your healthcare provider. There are wonderful ways that we can manage your asthma these days to make you have a very normal life. So don't let it take control of your life. Definitely talk to, to your doctor to see what medicines are right for you. Get that action plan, get everybody in the family on board, and then everybody in your schools and community on board as well. Thank you both so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank and you. Thank Thanks you at us. home for watching. If you have other questions, you can always check out the website as well, balladhealth.com. And again, if we didn't get to your question, we will be sure to have someone email you with a response. Again, balladhealth.com. Have a great night, everybody. Good night.